welcome to St. Brendan's on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost um, morning prayer. Uh, my name is Joe Shepard, and I'll be the leader today. And our pianist is Stephanie Hall, and our violist and singer is Stephanie McDermott, and Dan is on the camera. And um, welcome to everybody, whether you're here or you're watching us on, on the Zoom. Um, our morning prayer this morning is right to and uh, the opening hymn is Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. <laughs> Above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, 
and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come on, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let's read Psalm 30 responsibly by pastors. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. And have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkly of an eye. Favor, Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dead thus praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master because by him the Lord had given him victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served as Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter of the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life to that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet of Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have not done it? 
how much more when all that is said to you was wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the song of the redeemed together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O beginning of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you. Because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Gospel reading today is a reading from Luke. The Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Good morning. The sermon this morning is written by the Reverend D. Rebecca DeNovo, who serves at uh, church in... La Jolla and San Diego, California, and it's called Peace. In the movie Miss Congeniality, there is a scene during the beauty pageant in which contestants are asked what society needs most, and each contestant responds predictably, world peace. And then Sandra Bullock's character is asked the same question, but she responds, that would be harsher punishment for parole violators. <laughs> she smiles and the crowd looks back blankly at her. There is a long and awkward silence. Then she blinks and says enthusiastically, and hey, world peace. And the crowd goes wild with cheering and applause. Wishing for world peace is so predictable and overused that it has become cliche, even the punchline of a joke. And yet, just about every human being on the planet genuinely does desire world peace. In fact, people want peace in their hearts and lives as well as in their nation and ultimately in the world. The hope for peace expresses a universal desire that lies in the heart of humans, even if we sometimes disagree on exactly how to achieve it. 
Mother Teresa spoke a lot about the concept of peace, but she always spoke about peace in a very practical and tangible way. She was interested in the things we can do here and now, the small things that really make a difference in order to achieve peace. Peace was not an abstract idea for her. She once wrote, peace begins with a smile, and later wrote, all works of love are works of peace. Yet it's easy to feel as if peace is totally beyond us, as if it is merely an abstract ideal or pie in the sky and nothing more than a cliché. We may even be tempted to despair of peace in light of the violence we continue to witness in our own nation as well as in places like Ukraine. But Jesus and the Gospels encourage us to never stop striving for peace. As we read about the 72 missionaries that Jesus sent out in pairs, we learn that Jesus' followers already have the peace of Christ in their hearts. In fact, this peace is ours the moment we say yes to Jesus, and it is ours to give and share with others. Notice that Jesus says, whenever you enter a house, extend your peace to all those who live there, saying, peace to this house. And if anyone is willing to share in that peace, then he says, this peace will rest on that person. This passage, as well as other passages in the Bible, urges us to offer God's peace to others. Indeed, this is at the heart of our practice in the liturgy when we pass the peace to one another. We even hear echoes of this scriptural injunction when the celebrant says, the peace of the Lord be always with you, and the people respond, and also with you. This passing of the peace is not just a nice and cordial concept for use in our worship and liturgy. This is actually our practice for taking Christ's peace to the outside world wherever we go. Have you ever tried to bring the peace of the Lord to those you encounter each day? Just imagine the ways you could begin to practice passing the peace outside the church. Perhaps you practice passing the peace by simply smiling, as Mother Teresa described or by engaging in acts of loving charity, or by saying peace to people as you pass by them, even if it is just a quiet prayer under your breath. What if we saw ourselves as missionaries and understood our missionary task to include bringing and proclaiming God's peace wherever we go? How might that change our perspectives and our lives, as well as the lives of those around us? And notice that, according to Jesus, not everyone will be ready to receive this peace, or even want it. Jesus says, And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Maybe you have experienced this. You smiled at someone, and they simply scowled back. Or you tried to offer a peaceful solution to an argument, but your solution was rejected. On a global scale, the rejection of peace is actually quite alarming. But according to Jesus, regardless of whether this peace is accepted or not, we are still called to extend this blessing of peace to those we encounter, knowing it will return to us if, if rejected. This is related to what it means when Jesus says, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Peace is evidence of the kingdom of God in our midst, and the kingdom of God is indeed present, here and now. But here's the problem. The peace that God has placed in our hearts can get buried and hidden underneath fear, impatience, shame, resentment, bitterness, or even hatred. In fact, it is not a coincidence that one of the results of a missionary's experience in this passage is discovering that they have the power and authority of exorcism, the ability to exercise evil. Jesus says, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. In Jewish tradition, snakes and scorpions were symbols of the sources of evil, not literal reptiles or arachnids. 
This passage is not a call to engage in snake handling, as some have interpreted it, but a call to engage in exercising evil whenever and wherever we as followers of Christ encounter it. As Christians who have accepted the peace of Christ into our hearts, we all have been given the power and the authority to exercise the evil in our world. The responsibility to exercise sin and evil from our own hearts and lives is first and foremost, however. When at, wherever fear or hostility reign and threaten to control us, we are called to declare the peace of the Lord and to announce the presence of the kingdom of God, which is one powerful way to dispel evil. We should never forget that God has come near and is with us. From there we can confront evil with the power of Christ's peace that leads to acts of justice and righteousness. And sharing Christ's peace really can begin with someone with something as simple and small as a smile. We can choose the smile over the scowl, even when others don't deserve it. It was once confessed by Arthur Bremer, the serial killer, who had made the decision to commit mass murder, followed by suicide one day, that his mind was suddenly changed because when he went to eat his last meal at a diner, the waitress was friendly and smiled at him. Her smile meant that no one died that day. Talk about the power of peace in dispelling evil. The big audacious goal that is being proposed by Jesus and by Christians like Mother Teresa is that world peace really does start with us, with the peace of Christ in our own hearts, given to us by God and then extended to others. This peace can carry us out of fear and bitterness and into the blessed calm and sanctuary of God's love and presence, God's smile upon us. From there, we can spread this peace to others, our family, our neighbors, our nation, and yes, even the world. We can choose to bring the blessing of peace wherever we go. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Smile or people back to the 60s. <laughs> Peace. Let us all stand and say with each other the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I will believe in the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Catholic Church, with the communion of saints, with the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us sing.
Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you that we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. And your safe and health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in your vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's loose offering will go into the discretionary fund for the priest in charge.
prayers of the people today is come through. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Caroline, our priest in charge, Mark, the archdeacon for Southeast, and Michael, our deacon. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for President Biden, Governor Dunleavy, the Congress, the state legislature, and the Supreme Court. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in all the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Judy and Louise's family. Larry and family, Julie, Mark, Mark Teresa and Johnny, Mimi, Jerry, Linda, Ted, Marilyn, Jackie, Gary, Tana, Fred, Stephanie, Mary, Father Mark and family, Ron and Donna, Penny, Millette and Reagan, AJ, Marlene, Tristan, Jim, Harlan, Colleen, Cindy, Ann, Bill and Janet, Stephen and Kathy, Aaron and Vaughn, Dwayne, Constance, Dave, Nicole, Marcia, Pat, Faith, Troy, Cheryl, John, Lori, Paul, Sherry A, Don A, Jackie, Jordan, Jeremy, Jonathan, for all those on the front lines dealing with the coronavirus and those suffering from it, the victims of domestic violence, all who live and work at the Johnson Youth Center and the Juno Youth Services Homes, all who live with addictions and those who love and care for them, all around the world who suffer from AIDS or Alzheimer's, and for those who look for a cure. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially to you. The light perpetual shine on. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common application to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions that it may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, a life of Amen. Are there any birthdays? Any anniversaries? Well, I don't have um, any announcements here to say. Is there anyone who'd like to make any announcement? Carolyn? Uh, some of you know that I had a yard sale this week. And I have left over a pair of twin beds. They are wooden. They are heavy. They are solid as a rock. Um, they are a little dinged up after two generations of use. But they are very practical. They do not have the mattress and... and and, and box spring. Um, if anybody wants to pay for them, they're $50, but if they don't want to pay for them, they're free. I just need to get rid of them. <laughs> so um, if anybody knows somebody who needs a couple of twin beds, uh, talk to me after the service or give me a call and I will be happy to shed this detritus that's sitting in my yard right now. <laughs> Judy's address in the directory? Yes, yes it is. 
Any other announcements? Okay. Then our closing hymn is In Christ There Is No East or West.